So in this short video, we're going to actually focus on interval estimation of a population proportion. And in much like the case of the population mean, where we had a point estimate plus a margin of error, we have a point estimate plus a plus or minus a margin of error as well. In this case, the point estimate for us is the sample proportion and the margin of error happens to be appropriately, and we'll see in the next page, Z alpha over 2 times the standard error of the sample proportions. But you may recall from chapter 7 when we did sampling distributions that the standard error of sample proportions is given by P1 minus P over N, the square root of that. So the square root of P into 1 minus P over root N. But since we are looking to estimate population proportion P, we cannot have P in this formula, so we are going to have to use our estimate of sigma P bar as the sample proportion, 1 minus the sample proportion over N, right? So the square root of P bar times 1 minus P bar over N. And that's what we're going to get. So our formula should look like this. So here it is right here, interval estimate of population proportion. Here's our point estimate. Here's our critical value. Here is our standard error. And together, those two things give us the margin of error. All right? And remember from our discussions around the interval estimation of population mean, 1 minus alpha is the confidence level or confidence coefficient. Alpha is the significance level. Z alpha over 2 is the Z value corresponding to the current um, confidence lim limit or the confidence uh, coefficient or the confidence level that we're interested in. All right. So only one more thing is to just decide now if we want a particular margin of error. With this case, how then do we get the sample size for a particular margin of error? So if we are now interested in a sample size for a particular margin of error, we specify the error and then we equate this part to it. And when we do the manipulation of the formula, we will get our sample size n is given by this formula right here. All right. So we just have to do cross multiplication and rearrangement of the terms in the formula. So just keep in mind that we cannot have p in this formula because population P is not known. Now sometimes, sometimes we don't have a sample proportion P bar, but that does not actually stop us from getting or estimating a sample size for a given margin of error. Why? Because we know that P bar goes between 0 and 1, right? P bar goes between 0 and 1. So what happens is that we get in this formula, our maximum value for n is determined when we use a sample proportion of 50%. In other words, we could determine that by looking at p bar 1 minus p bar, right, in the numerator. If p bar is, say, for example, 10%, 1 minus p bar would be 90%. That basically gives us 0 0.09. 2, 20%, 0 0.25, 0 0.8, 0 0.16, 0 0.3 times 0.7, 0.21. When we get to 0 0.4 times 0 0.6, 0 0.24, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, 0 0.25, etc. If you keep going down, it just reverses, right? Then you have 0.6 times 0.4 and so on. So really, the, the maximum value 
that this term could have in the function is 0.25 and that will give us our maximum n. So some problems might not actually specify a sample proportion for you to calculate a sample size. In that case you use 0.5 to do that. All right. And so I think that this is a very short video just to introduce now to you the interval estimation of a population proportion. All the concepts or the ideas that we talked about earlier also apply. And then just one more thing to remind you of, recall that we can do a normal approximation to a binomial only if certain conditions are satisfied. And that condition or those conditions are n times p bar. Now the reason why I have p bar now in this case is because I don't know p. Is greater than or equal to 5 and n1 minus times 1 minus p bar is also greater than or equal to 5. If we have that then we could use the normal approximation to the binomial. Okay? Normal approximation to the binomial. Good. And so now I think it's time to get into some problems. So that will be our next video.